So this is going to be the assembly video for the MLA boring and facing head. And if you haven't heard of MLA, it's this website and they sell casting kits or casted kits rather uh, for accessories mainly for the 9 inch South Bend Logan style lathes. And uh, they have all kinds of stuff. I uh, have another video that I made of the loop collet chuck, 5C collet chuck that they sell. So you can check that out as well. Um, this is the boring and facing head. And these kits are awesome. This one um, came with all the castings, all the material, everything for the main body and the, the, the uh, collar here. Um, I believe everything else I had to source myself. And... Uh, Basically, if you order this kit, you'll get a set of instructions. Uh, this is a, a letter from the guy who runs the company, Andy. He's really nice. Um, these are the instructions here. So he basically gives you a whole detailed set of instructions on how to go through and how to machine everything. In particular, how to machine everything only using the lathe. Um, so these kits are a lot easier if you have uh, you know, a milling machine, but you get an awesome set of detailed instructions. You get all kinds of blueprints. Um, this is the assembly print here for the for the boring and facing head. Um, I went through for a couple of the pieces, in particular the gear here, and I'll zoom in and I'll detail all this stuff. But in particular for the gear, um, I wasn't really satisfied with the blueprint for that. So I went and using the dimensions that were on the blueprint, I made a, a model in CAD and made up my own a little more detailed um, blueprint for machining the gear, the two different faces of the gear. And uh, I'll post a link in the description for those uh, if anybody needs them. But so this is all the whole exploded view and uh, I'll zoom in and I'll detail everything before we put it together. I'm gonna go over a couple of things I did differently than what the blueprints called for. So this is the bottom half of the main body. This is the part that slides in and out, the part that holds the tools. And you'll see these holes here, those are for bolting this brass nut in place. And what's different is these two pinholes are not on the blueprint. So the instructions, you know, have you bolt this in place and then assemble most of the boring head and drill and tap it in place so everything lines up. Well, the only problem with that is if you ever have to take it apart, it's only being held in by bolts. So if you go to put it back together, it's going to be very difficult to get everything lined up again. So what I did was I added these two little 3 seconds pins in the bottom and then bolted it in, machined it in place, and that allowed me to be able to take it out and put it back however many times I want, or if I ever have to repair it for whatever reason, take it apart, I can put it back without having to worry about everything lining up. And you do have to remove this to get this piece off of the main body. The next thing I did differently was this whole thing is actually intended just to be used on a lathe. It's intended to be threaded on to an inch and a half, eight spindle thread of a lathe. I never intended to use it on my lathe, and I don't have that size lathe anymore. I have a bigger one. So I made this R8 arbor for it to go in my milling machine, and it has inch and a half, eight thread on the bottom of the arbor, and it's threaded in and then pinned all the way through with a spring pin so that it can't come out. And the last thing I did differently was on the collar here. This is the piece that you will hold when the facing head is rotating to get the, the, the tool to advance automatically on its own. I added these holes all the way around, so if you wanted to, you could stick a shaft in there and hold it with that instead of grabbing onto this with your hands. So there's also a little bit of tooling that needs to be made to complete this. Um, this is the gear that goes on the threaded shaft and when the collar is being held, there's a little pin in there, and every time that comes around, it hits one of these faces on this gear, and it will advance the boring head. So turning the blank was easy. That was just done on the lathe. But to machine the faces on the mill, I made this little arbor, and this just goes in the dividing head. It's got a little pin in it to act as a key, and this gets stuck on there, and this washer and the nut go on there to clamp it, and then I was able to index it in the dividing head and machine all the faces. This piece here, this little collar, uh, is the collar with all the increments and the divisions uh, for how far you're advancing the boring head. And again, turning this is pretty simple on the lathe, uh, but then to machine all those little lines, I made this little fixture. Again, this goes in the dividing head. This slips on here, 
and then I have a nut and a washer that bolts up against that and that allowed me to rotate it and machine all those little divisions on the dividing head and then I just stamped the numbers afterwards uh, with number stamps. So I'm going to go over each of the parts individually a little bit before I assemble everything so you guys can get a closer look at it. So this is the main assembly. This is the, the top body and this is the bottom slide. So this is going to be sliding in and out when you're advancing it by hand or when it's being advanced automatically by the facing feature. Um, so like I showed you before, it's got an R8 Arbor on it. It's pretty hefty. Um, it's a big casting, so it's going to be need to be spun pretty slow in the mill. But uh, there's an undercut in here, and that's a space for the pawl that's in the collar. That's the piece that's going to advance the gear every time. And then this little uh, pocket here, that's where the gear will stick through. And then that allows it to be struck by the pawl each time. The collar fits over this, and then there's a little retaining ring that fits on top of that to lock everything in place. Uh, this part here, this is where this little piece th will thread into this and that threads in and that allows everything to line up properly with the shaft inside and uh, this has a little indicator mark on it and that's what all the indications line up with on the smaller collar that I showed a little earlier. So that will thread into there. This is the brass nut and the thread threaded rod that uh, advance the slide and this is just brass and some A2 tool steel it's a half 40 left hand thread so I had a half 40 tap I was able to tap the nut with and I had to machine the thread uh, on the lathe it's got a little keyway for the gear and then a flat spot for the set screw uh, for the collar on the outside so that will bolt up to this and stick through the main body there and then this is the collar with all the marks on it, and this is the knob that goes onto the shaft. Um, I did add this. I forgot to mention that earlier. This is not on the blueprint. I machined a hex bolt and pressed it in there so I can use an Allen wrench to advance it instead of just advancing it by hand. So this collar will slide onto this. There's a little groove in there so that the set screw doesn't mar the surface of that and that goes on there that allows you to adjust this this is a really nice feature I like on this boring head this is adjustable so you can set your zero most boring heads you're just stuck wherever it is and you have to work off of whatever number you land on this is really nice that you can move this and you can set your zero um, and then this will go into this piece here and then that clamps onto the shaft there's a little hole here that allows you to access the set screw to clamp it onto the shaft. So that's all the little pieces. This is the gib that goes in the dovetail and it's got little pockets machined into it so the set screws press into those pockets instead of pressing into this face and damaging it. And the reason for the gib is see this gap in the dovetail here this allows you to not have to machine a perfect dovetail. Um, you basically just slide this in to that slot and it, even this is loose in there and then you'll s tighten those set screws and that takes up the space in the dovetail and you don't have to worry about machining a perfect dovetail uh, it's a great feature to have on this this is the collar uh, that fits around the main part of the body so this sits on here and this little thing here is called a pawl and that's got a little taper machined on it and a flat machined on it and there's a little pin inside here and this drops into this hole right there drops in like that and that pin prevents it from falling all the way through and this uh, angle on there is just for clearance so that will go inside this and when this is on here When you hold this and this is rotating every time this comes around that pawl is going to hit the gear inside and advance the slide and then this is the little lock collar this threads on here and keeps the collar from coming off it's not threaded down all the way but that'll keep the collar from coming off all right let's put it together
this is the hardest part of the assembly, this initial step. At least I found it was. Um, so I've removed the R8 arbor. I hadn't pinned it yet, but you need to have access to this top hole to bolt this brass nut in. So I've taken the R8 arbor out. So what you need to do is you need to take the gear and put it on to the threaded shaft. And there's a keyway in there with a key, and that keeps it locked in. And it goes in this orientation here. The next thing we'll do is we'll put this inside. And the next step will be putting this on. Just make sure I got that in the right orientation. So now that that's slid on, I'm going to flip it over. And this is what I find to be the hardest. I've got to line this up and get this in my pinholes. And there's not a lot of room in there. So I just found the pinholes, and now that's locked in there. You see that's not going to move. So I'll drop these two bolts in and bolt it down. So from here on out, it gets pretty easy. I just found that lining that up, especially with the pins, getting everything in there, so not that much room in there, that was the hardest part for me. All right, so now that that's bolted down, I'm gonna slide the gib in there, and that'll just take up this space, and it, this won't be flopping around in there. And I'll just, long Allen wrench, I'll just, clamp one of these down a little bit that way it's not going to come flying out on me okay now that that's in there the next step is going to be installing this little collar here so this just threads right in And this little hole is actually to lock a set screw down, but I'm going to use it just to give this a little snug. So now that that's installed, you can see the gear poking through there. And that's going to be bumped up. It might be hard to see on the video, but this collar pokes through just a hair, and that gear is going to be bumped up against that, and that's what keeps it in place. Okay. So there's my little indicator mark for my collar with all my hash marks on it. You can see I've lined up the flat with that opening. So that makes it a little easier for the next step. So the next step is we're going to put this little collar onto the knob. And I'm just going to make sure I have it oriented right. So that's going to go on there. And I'm just going to lock this down for now because it's not important where it is right now. We don't want it moving around on us. And the next step is going to be to install this on here. So this has a nice fit inside. And once it's on, I just have to get the set screw close to being locked down, because otherwise it won't fit in. Now that slides in there. And you can see the set screw poking through, hopefully. And then that just gets locked down on the shaft. All right, so that's all assembled. I just snug to give down a little bit. It just has to be finger tight. It doesn't have to be really tight, otherwise it's not going to be able to move. So now you'll be able to see if I adjust this knob, you can see the slide slowly moving. It's advancing. And that's got a nice fit. Everything works perfectly. Nice and smooth. A little bit a little snug, but a really good fit. And you can see that gear moving around in there. This is the R8 Arbor, so if you have an Arbor, at least if it's pinned like mine is, this would be the next step for me. So this is the Arbor I made. It's got an inch and a half, eight thread on it, and then I machined this taper on here, and as a matching taper here, so that when it threads in, if the thread was a little loose, it didn't matter. That taper would uh, seat it and locate it perfectly concentric. So I'm going to thread this in, and then I'm going to put the spring pin all the way through. All right, so I put the spring pin in off camera. It was just a little easier. You can see it in there. Now that's locked in there, and that's not going to come out. And the reason, reason I use a spring pin, just a little easier than a dowel pin, um, just drill a hole instead of reaming it, and then it's going to 
be nice and tight in there. I don't have to worry about it moving at all, and it's easy to take out. Uh, I don't have to worry about press fit or anything in there with a dowel pin. So the next step is going to be to put this collar on. So the collar just slides right over the top like that. Now that's on there. Then this little paw goes down in that hole. I just have to make sure I have it oriented right. Just push it down there. Now the paw is in there. And then this little spring goes on top. And the spring is there because when the lock collar goes on top of this, that spring is going to put just a little bit of pressure on that to keep it from moving up uh, when you don't want it to. So it keeps it in the down position. Uh, that pawl doesn't actually, is not designed to move up or anything. It should be in place when it hits that gear. And the spring just gives it a little bit of tension to push down. And if it does need to move up a little bit, it's going to move a little bit, but not so much that it's like oscillating. So that spring goes in there. And then the last step is to put this collar on. So just make sure it's clean, make sure this is clean. And that's going to thread right on. And that'll bottom out, and uh, that'll be just a couple of thousands of clearance in there for that collar. I don't know if you can hear that, but just a little bit of movement. And that is the full assembly of the MLA boring and facing head. And now let's give it a shot. All right, so here it is in the bridge port. And uh, I'll take some still photos and put them on my website. And I'll post a link in the description to the photos on the website so you can take a better look at it in a little more detail than just in the video. But uh, I'll turn the mill on and I'll hold the collar and then you can see how the advancement works. Uh, you won't be able to see it while it's running, but uh, you can see right now that both of them are lined up uh, pretty close. So I'll turn the machine on. And then all I have to do is grab this collar and you can hear it clicking and that's the advancement every time it comes around. And that's also why you can see it's a little scary hold on to this thing. That's why I added those holes in the collar. So if you wanted to, you could put a shaft in there. You could uh, put a shaft in the, the little uh, thing right there in the mill for, the, for a tapping head. And then you wouldn't have to put your hands anywhere near it. You could run it automatically. So it's advanced a little bit. Now you see after I've held it for a little bit, it's advanced. And uh, I think it advances about five thousandths. Uh, every time the pawl hits the gear. I have to do the math, but uh, when you do it uh, by hand, it advances about five thousandths. So we're at 12, we come around again. Yeah, it's a little under five, so a little under five thousandths each time. 